Hello everybody to the video about MIDI 2.0 and I'm asking the question is it really a thing or is it dead before it even was born <laughs> and sorry for this clickbait title but MIDI 2.0 got announced three years ago and up to date there's not a single product you can buy on the market and because of that the question must be allowed what's happening or will it happen and in this video we will look at the current situation and hopefully answer the question if there is hope. So just as a refresher, if you never heard about MIDI 2.0 or you forgot about it, there's a nice introduction video done by the MIDI Association, which you can find on this link. All the links are down in the comment of this video, so you don't have to type it here from the video. Just go down in the comment and you will find all the links I show in this video. But a little info, so the main points is that you have now a two-way communication. You have higher resolution, which everybody was waiting for, so better control messages and you have this thing called property exchange so you can ask a MIDI 2.0 device what can you support what are your parameters what are the names of these and there are also some kind of profiles for example a device can say I'm an origin and then a controller could use for example is faders to change the different origin bars but the most important thing is that it does not define any hardware requirements. It's a pure protocol, so pure data protocol, which you can then run on any kind of communication hardware, for example, on a USB bus or a network or any other things which might pop up in the future. And currently there are already changes and updates to the current specification happening. And there's also a link which I have here where you can read up about that. This link also contains more information about MIDI 2.0, what it is. But in the upper part, there is an update about the changes of the specifications. And there is more things currently in the specification phase. So only the USB mapping was defined, but now also a network transport is in the works also serial and other things like new file format and also specific profiles for the devices. But we want to look into the state. So what's happening with prototyping? Will we see real devices? Manufacturer need to first test and have some prototyping and also need to have other devices where they can test this protocol and their implementation against it. So you need some testing devices where you can test the basic transport layer, which is called the universal MIDI packet UMP. And you need also some hardware devices which support the MIDI CI, so the specification where to get these property information and these profiles from. They did this nice trick that is backward compatible to MIDI 1.0. So it's also possible to have MIDI 1.0 implementing or updating their devices to support MIDI CI, which is a really interesting thing. If you can, for example, show on your controller the parameter names of an external synthesizer. But the most important thing is that operating systems need that UMP support and the MIDI 2.0 API. So back in the days when they came up with MIDI 1.0 it was sufficient to have two hardware synthesizers which can talk to each other and you can play the one from the other and the other way around but nowadays people mainly use a door on the operating system like windows mac or also linux and if this operating system does not support midi 2.0 there's no way to start your development at all but nevertheless, you still need hardware devices like controllers. It's a hand and egg problem. So you need at least something to get you started. So what's the current situation with prototype devices? So there is this thing called the ProtoSOA from the company Amy Note, which is pretty active in the MIDI association. But the sad thing about it, it's only available to MIDI association members. It's actually pretty easy to become a member, but there are two kinds of members. The one is the paying ones and the other one is the not paying ones. And only as a paying member, you get access to the hardware. So you still have to pay for it, but you only get then access to have the chance to pay for it. But nevertheless, this is a cool device which has different connection possibilities, speaks the protocols and yeah, runs on a Raspberry Pico and companies finally have access to a proper hardware test device to keep them going. 
And it turns out there is a device which you can buy, but it only supports MIDI 1.0. But over MIDI 1.0, they implemented this MIDI CI. So you can have this profile configuration and the property exchange test. And this is a simple Groove synthesizer, which is fully open source. You can look it up here on this URL, GrooveSizer.com. There is a firmware update. I hope it's available for everybody. I did not check that so far. And it's it can be used to have a basic test of the at least the property exchange. And there is another tool from the Media Association called the Media Workbench, and this allows you to run different tests, different protocol tests. It's also used to check for compatibility of the MIDI 2.0 protocol to get you finally the approval to have the MIDI 2.0 logo on your device. And sadly, this is also only available to the full proper MIDI Association members. Turns out there is another product. So both Boombox, I guess it's known from also the older Boom software, which allows you to have on your OS a kind of MIDI mapper, merger, translator, whatever. It contains a kind of script language, which allows you to change MIDI messages in many, many different ways. And this little Boombox can run the same scripts and it has lots of connectivity. So it can run MIDI via Ethernet, via USB, via the good old five pin cables, and also USB. And they already support here the discovery and the property exchange. So this is also still via MIDI 1.0. But also here the members of the company are pretty active in a MIDI association. And I guess when it got stable MIDI 2.0 specification, they will also have it in their box. Something I was totally not aware of is there is an automotive audio bus, which seems to be quite a thing in an automotive industry. And it uh, reduces the cables you need in a car to connect your loudspeakers in the car to one cable running digital instead of analog. And they are also, I think, trying to push that into the normal audio market. To do so, they are now also supporting MIDI as well as MIDI 2.0. So this is something to watch out out for. And as I talked already about, the most important thing is to have the support in the operating systems on different levels. So it needs an API. This is the interface that developers can use to support MIDI Tutoto in their doors, in their plugins. But you also need proper drivers where you connect your gear. And you need also the chips which support this driver for your hardware. It turns out Mac OS from Apple already has for quite some time. So since Mac OS 12 Monterey, it's in the API. And I checked also the API and it says it also supports iOS since version 14. AI iPad OS also since version 14 and interestingly also TV OS and watch OS which I think is very funny and yeah maybe via Bluetooth so maybe you can play then your synthesizer on your watch in the future and if you want to look into that here is the link to the developer documentation for core MIDI which contains also now this new MIDI event packets which is the transport protocol for MIDI 2.0 and it turns out Android so so the competition of the iOS devices in their latest release 13 also support MIDI 2.0, also on a USB a transport level. And here is also the documentation which you can check out if you're interested into that. This leaves us to the question, what about Windows? And it turns out this little company called Microsoft, which has only some billion of dollars, need to have some funding from an external little company called the Association of Musical Electronics Industries. And this is the association which oversees the media specification in Japan. And they're giving now out of funding to develop an open source USB MIDI 2.0 host driver for Windows. So you can think about it's like the class compliant audio driver, but now for MIDI 2.0. So every manufacturer of a hardware can use that driver to connect their devices and do not have to develop their own ones. So Eminote uh, is, should develop now the driver. So the funding is going to this company and we saw them before. They did these hardware test devices. The company should know what they're doing and hopefully this development will not take too long. But also Microsoft will finally 
start the development of an API for MIDI 2.0, and which is, seems to be already happening, but it's not published. But nevertheless, they want to publish it on GitHub under an MIT license. So this is some really good news, I think, because Linux people or other interested could also check it out or might be using parts of it also to support it on different other operating systems. The goal is to complete this next year in 23, so hopefully not in the too far future. And there's some additional info from Pete Brown of Microsoft. He's also Cyclist1972 on Gearspace.com, where you can find several info about the development of MIDI 2.0 as well. So there's a link down here. And he said the API will be available for Windows 11 and Windows 10 is not yet conformed, but might happen. So also older OSs like Windows 7 or even XP are definitely out of the game and are to be considered dead. The last item is interesting. The API should be properly transport agnostic, which means what I told in the beginning that MIDI 2.0 can be run on anything or any transport protocol that can be supported like USB or also network protocols and all other things. So this leaves us to the final question. And what about Linux? There it does not look so cool so far as the last sentence was added to this announcement about Windows. So the MAI and the Media Association, they talk to also community people and mm, yeah, begging maybe <laughs> to, to them that they also will implement some drivers for Linux. So this is more than vague. So we can only have our fingers crossed that maybe the Windows driver might give some inspiration to the also people so we can have or see that on Linux in a hopefully not too far future as well. The question is now, what is holding back? Why is there nothing after three years? And there are some answers from that, also from Pete Brown, but also added from others. And the thing is, uh, yeah, early hardware software adopters found some things difficult. Updates of the specifications required. So I showed these updates seem to be there. And yeah, you need to wonder if this is something that should not be common knowledge by now. If you have a specification written on paper in secretly in your back, office. It might not work in the beginning, so it's very important to have early prototyping, which they try to a degree, but I think if you do it from the beginning in the open, lots of people can command and make it just a better standard. And Windows has no support for it, and Linux, we talked about this already. Reasons I do not really understand. I have a little bit of the impression that Pete Brown is the only one holding up the torch for, for MIDI and for audio as well at the Microsoft site, but we keep our fingers crossed uh, that it will happen. So pandemic is always a good excuse that something did not work. Yeah, so Microsoft shifted, I guess, all the people, all the developers to improving teams. So their video software and sure, finally, semiconductor shortages is always an issue currently. And to have those test boards is yeah, not so easy nowadays. To sum up, I think it's still happening. Reasons are understandable why it did not work quicker and it's definitely not an easy task to get all those things into different operating systems, have the hardware ready, have drivers written. This just takes some time. And let's have our fingers crossed that really next year, first products are showing up and we can finally use the promised cool new features of MIDI 2.0. What do you think? Do you have other opinions? Will it be dead before it's born? Or will it even be see greater days? Tell me down in the comments. And until next time, make some funky music with Old MIDI 1.0.